the city of Southfield, county of Oakland, state of Michigan, do hereby recognize and congratulate Southfield Christian Boys basketball team on winning their first Glass D state championship on March 24, 2012. And they told me, one of them sent me an email and said, this is the first of many, right? <laughs>
Good. Yes. At this time, uh, Council, I would like to present to you uh, two reappointments. Um, you have uh, before you the uh, application or the request for reappointment, and I would like to ask Mr. Jeff Griffin and Mr. Huntington to join me if they're here in attendance. Thank you. Mr. Griffin's uh, new term of service will run through June 2015. He served as a replacement for Mr. Robert Haysha, which you know left in the middle of his term. Mr. Huntington's new term of service will run through June 2015, as he has served since 2008. And with your approval, um, request tonight for your approval. Madam Chair, I move the reappointment to the Planning Commission of Jeremy Griffith Support. and Stephen Huntington. Support. We have a motion by Kevin Mr. Simon, supported by Mr. Jordan. All in favor? Aye. All in favor? Motion has carried. Well, they, they're showing on, and I guess we'll have to. Well, they are. 
closely is to turn up our internal volume. <laughs> Uh, that is why we use the language 
in the uh, discussion immediately preceding this meeting. But I'm going to incorporate the terms that were discussed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We come to public hearings, and I've already made the announcement of the single lot special assessment rules uh, hearing and confirmation, but uh, this is the public hearing, and I declare the public hearing open. Anyone that wishes to address? First of all, we're going to ask our assessor to um, give us some information. Good evening, Madam Chair, the Mayor, members of the City Council. My name is David T. Jarena, the City Assessor. In uh, Section 113 of the City Code, mandates the procedure for assessing costs, uh, certain costs uh, incurred by the city through an assessment process. These costs are uh, charged throughout the throughout the past year by various departments, and if they're not paid, they become a lien on the land and then placed on the tax bill via a, a single lot special assessment. In accordance with that code. The assessor shall prepare an assessment rule covering all such costs, and the council shall hear a schedule a hearing of confirmation of the assessment rule. Such assessments and all interests and charges thereon from the date of confirmation of the rule uh, be and remain a week on the property assessed. Uh, it's therefore, my recommendation that uh, your honorable body conduct a public hearing and approve the attached resolution confirming the single lot special assessment rule. enough for 
from the, 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 the description to know what the, what it's about. Is there? Yeah, if I can help you out, uh, there are various uh, assessments that are put on most of my code enforcement. They would include noxious weeds. They would you know, be uh, a tear down in a couple of instances. So violations of the code. Also violations. Okay. 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 I just wasn't sure about it.
just the notice itself or will it's in legal compliance? Uh, perhaps we can we can improve on that uh, in terms of the public knowledge uh, of the process. So uh, that will happen. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Councilman. First of all, I've been living in a, in a residence of the city of South Coast for the next three years now and been awarded a true beautification award to our former homeowners association. During the last three years, I have been a target regarding violation of city ordinances such as this that I will be reputing to you. During the week of uh, May 17th, this is what I received and I've never received any notice from the city that I have been in violation of uh, uh, removal of noxious weeds, okay, last year. Um, as a matter of fact, during that week, I was told by the lady at the code enforcement that I was absent in my house. But during the week of the May 17th, I tripped and fell face forward in front of the city Southfield Library, I went home limping as I hurt my knee very badly. During that same week, I saw the guy spraying uh, uh, my lawn for nauseous weeds. And I just informed my neighbor that the weeds uh, uh, are coming, but then the guys are already there doing it. And then the next thing I know, I received this two months ago that I had been charge $35 for weed removal and administration fee of $65 without any notification beforehand. I'm really upset about this, knowing that I know my responsibility as a homeowner and I did obedient and diligently pay my taxes and I don't need this kind of notification that I am in violation of such ordinances. This is really very hurting to me because uh, uh, you know, I represent my my uh, my block next to my black cousin, and he doesn't understand why I received this letter either. And I have consulted several, and they said that is a trend going on, given by the code enforcement. And I'm here to let you know that um, I'm, I'm here to request for you to waive this amount and this bill is still a bit questionable to me because those weeds, even though they were treated, they were not treated appropriately. And if you don't know it, your grass will turn yellow without watering it. Until my neighbor decided to start spraying the weeds again in my lawn. So that doesn't make any sense to me what happened. And I'm here to let you know that this is the a trend that is going on around our neighborhood. Thank you. Don't leave, don't leave. Don't leave. Please stay like okay. this. First of all, you, I need you to give your name and address. My name is Melinda Farhead and I live in 23404 Club Group Drive. Mr. Lutkowski is available, uh, code enforcement. He'll be glad to review the particulars of your situation. Uh, I want to repeat, we do not want to mow anyone's lawn. Uh, we, but we want an appearance and a standard. And, uh, but we'll be glad to review the particular circumstances of your situation and make whatever adjustments uh, are appropriate under the circumstances. Uh, Mr. Witkowski is available and uh, he will be glad to speak to you. He's back row there. So if you'd like to discuss it with him, we, we'd uh, appreciate that. Thank you. Where is Mr. Wachowski? Thank you. Thank you.
Hey everyone, Stephanie English, 28735 San Carlos, uh, Southfield 48076. Um, I'm here to speak on the issue too, but I want to give a fair <coughs> balance. First of all, I'd like to report that one of the city-owned homes needs to uh, be checked in terms of really growth, uh, uh, not just weeds. It's 21499 Virginia. Um, it's uh, right at the corner of San Carlos and uh, Virginia. Um, there's a carpet. Is it a vacant home? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a carpet, and um, Mr. Scotty, um, your friend Mr. Mullen, that lives on the nice house on the corner, was concerned, the one with the black iron fence. So he was going to get some help from you, but I told him I would relay his concerns. Mr. Zorn, are those about that address? Yeah. Vacation. It's supposed to be public service. Okay. Well, that gentleman has the showpiece home, but that uh, city owned home is actually pretty. Uh, lots of weeds to his uh, lawn, and he is the showpiece home of, you know, these particular blocks. But the other balance I'd like to give is, on behalf of my neighbors, to give the balance perspective that you can see when weeds are coming. And right now, I agree with Mr. Charette, I post this comment at the round table. We have to have the highest standards to maintain the increase in our home value. Curb appeal is it. Curb appeal and the appearance of safety is it. One house is almost like a rotten ass apple in a barrel. It, it can touch the fruit, the good fruit, and it just starts to decay the other fruit. I understand that some people uh, may have a um, budget issue or whatever, but that is the price you pay for being a homeowner, and that is the only thing that is going to increase value. I don't even care what the house looks like on the inside. The outward appearance eats up and increases in increments the direct value to the home. So the curb appeal becomes a business decision that each homeowner should take upon themselves that they are actually giving financial benefit to themselves. It is a touchy situation to go to your neighbors to say, could you just clean it up a little bit? But if you make it in a financial picture and show that the values do go up based on the curb appeal, then you're giving a fair incentive to the homeowner. It's something that we just don't have room to really make waves on. We do need to be sensitive. We do need to exercise the best communication opportunity, but it is not something that we can wave on. I told um, some of the leaders that were at the cold ground table, I don't have a problem with failure, but I have a problem with low aim. We cannot afford to keep the status quo. We have to increase our status quo and make our benchmarking higher. But I do understand it's touchy. Two years ago when I was here, I asked about going to Home Depot because I had gone to Home Depot and they were willing to publicize bulletins based on our code uh, requirements and actually offer on a city basis, if you could prove that you were a Southfield citizen, they were going to give coupons for fertilizer. So that could possibly, even though it was two years ago, it could possibly be a remedy. You know, Mr. Shredder, this is an home that you here. It's our home. I've, I've known the address and we will take action right. tomorrow.
closed, uh, special hearing is closed. I move the special assessment uh, roll uh, and of uh, the uh, April 23rd for the amount of $267,222.31. Mr. Court. Motion by Mr. Patowski, supported by Mr. Sadler. Mr. Jordan.
data costs that we maintain on a, on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. Uh, that, that's a big number right now. And uh, and so it's not necessarily a person a resident who's actually living in the house. Yeah, for the chair, that's a good point because our take of homes coincidentally is about 800. Uh, and the, the bank owned uh, homes, we, we, it is our goal that no one driving down the street will know that a home is vacant. That means that we, the, the grass gets cut properly, not like hay, it looks good, it's edged and it's cut properly. And uh, the, if, if the banks do not maintain their property, uh, they, they get sufficient notice and then we go out and get the work done. We want the community looking good. I would just like to tell um, to, to just echo um, what has been said with that and I was expecting to it. I think we need to be more aggressive in teaching uh, and talking about tips to eliminate dandelions and weeds from your yard. There are some people who to me struggle with the concept that they're going to have weeds and you don't have to have them if you use certain gardening techniques. And I think to our neighborhood association um, presidents, and we do flower day, um, it's, it's a way that, you know, ask people to, to give out lots. We have an amazing um, public works section of our, of our city that if you look at our, our landscaping and you look at our gardens, are extremely talented. So like you said, we have we have uh, Lowe's and we have um, Home Depot that can give out tips and, and possibly we could put on our website and, and do some things because we do, nothing is more unattractive than to see yards with, with, with dandelion and leaves in. And you'll have people who will cut it every week and they grow back overnight. And mm -hmm. it seems like there is ways that you don't have to have it. And I think that's something we'll give them a ticket when they have it. But can we give them, we'll give them a ticket. You can eliminate weeds from the yard if you use certain fertilizer or organic or however you want to do it. But uh, I think we need to do a little bit more than that. And that and our standard, uh, I can't tell you, um, I'll talk about that again in my section um, when I speak, but the community desire have a manual to give when they get a new neighbor that comes in and seems to be struggling so that they can know <coughs> what our ordinances and our policies are. And that, that is extremely critical. I think everyone at the round table felt the same way. We had some very new residents there that were asking, you know, I'm a new resident, but I don't know what the codes and ordinances are. Okay, so I just wanted to say maybe we can be, be proactive as, as we are reactive. Through, through the chair that the mayor's raising the bar, which is always a good thing, uh, in terms of, of weeds and dandelions, but we do want folks to know that the violations are for noxious weeds, which uh, are, uh, what is the height? I don't recall exactly what it is. The, the definition of noxious weeds? It's, it's within the ordinance. It's defined and it gives examples of what types of weeds are noxious weeds. <laughs> but uh, I thought there was a height, there's a height read, there's a height requirement. Well, yeah, it's, it's big weeds, major weeds. <laughs> so I understand with the tickets also that the residents receive, we actually, and I know code for it, actually measure, and it should be a certain height before you'll even get a ticket. And uh, so when we start getting our tickets, it's it really at a point, it should be at a point where it's just totally in the
suggest that we also um, have uh, perhaps some gardening or lawn maintenance classes on our TV channel. Mm -hmm. um, that we can like use this medium to uh, show folks um, how to buy your yard for less than you know, $50 or something. Um, yeah. um, and I know that uh, Lowe's um, and Home Depot, I see it all the time, they, they post classes, they're usually on Saturday morning, um, and they're on a whole range of um, house improvement, yard improvement topics. Um, you know, we can partner, even promote those, those classes. So if the classes are free, you don't buy anything, um, but, it, but it is a way of partnering with one of our businesses. All right, um, I'm going to move on to public hearing. Mr. Coe, I'm going to ask you to take that. Through the chair. Uh, next item is GP 1236, SB 1285, special use and site planning review request for new vision technology on behalf of the owner, Phoenix Group Holding LLC, for the construction of a freestanding 99 foot high communication tower. Property located at 21472 Bridge Street on the east side of Bridge Street, Phoenix Bridge Industrial Park. There are certain conditions that were um, made as part of the recommendation of the Planning Commission and Site Planning Review Committee that have not been satisfied to date. Therefore, I am recommending a postponement of this public hearing to a date certain, June 18, 2012. June 18, 2012? Yes, June 18, 2012, your regular meeting. Everything is
I don't see any handicap was between the 3 and 6 o'clock in the morning or between 9 o'clock. Um, I think a neighborhood by us, you know, just like, a, I don't, excuse me, like a chicken, they sleep early. I don't see nobody walk around. Nobody. So uh, I wonder, I live in dead end. Can I have a permission, maybe? Uh, my house, last house, and this is nobody goes by. I don't like nobody's way. We are not parking and somebody, you know, can I leave one car in the street maybe? Or so we need something, some help, you know. I talked to the people, the other, the one gave us ticket, and I said, what I should do? Should I move from the, from the city? She said, yeah, we don't care. Go ahead, move from the city. I don't care. I'm not going to move from my city. I've been living 29 years in the city. 23 in my house, five years in the apartment. And that lady tell me she don't care. I have to move because I park one foot from a sidewalk. This is not right. That's it. Thank you. Although I've heard that they have a terrific EMS 
and fire department. But I believe that Councilman Fraser knows a hell of a lot more about Lathrop's fire department than I do. Thank you, Madam President. Integrated city 
united in peace and harmony if our community relations director believes, and I'll quote, people are interested in the quality of life. This is, of course, means the quantity of whites in South Sea. Is that appropriate? And now on a more positive note, I want to take my last few seconds and recognize some very important historical figures in the audience. Two former Tuskegee Airmen, Major Dennis Mills and Major McCaffrey, and also the first black or one of the first black paratroopers from Unit 555 Parachute Infantry, Major Bob Tillman. So I love to have them. Or, or a way for them to confidentially share these issues, 
that the other chief, um, there were officers that uh, not were ordered, but however it was done, were to surveil and to spy on the other chief of police who was the other candidate. All of this kind of crap, I just don't really feel is right from any candidate that's going to be a potential police chief. Again, I'm trying to speak in smoky terms so that I can get more specifics to our administrative leaders. That's the best I can do right now. But it does need to come forward. And again, it's the Secret Service, it's Bromulus Police, Sterling Heights Police Department, Detroit Police Department. Whenever there is a problem with the police department, if they get disclosure, we need to have the same openness, and I'm asking for that transparency. So I will contact um, both of those leaders that I've mentioned here to see if I can get a meeting, but I would like to share that those situations do give me concern. Mm
equipment, stuff, because I deliver them. I know for a fact. Okay, let's go to Officer Sex. Now here's the buddy of always telling that when always telling that call got arrested in Detroit, which y'all may or may not know about, Officer Sex runs down there and gets them out, and he goes to court with them to back them up. It was allegedly about a stolen car. I'm not going to go there. I'm sorry? Okay. Okay, thank you. Before you start, Ms. Younger, I need you to give your name and address for the record, and your time will start when you start speaking. You have five minutes. My name is Ola Takumbo Unger, also I'm known as Ola Unger. My address is 29620 Wildbrook Drive, South Hill. I come to the council tonight with a heavy heart because about a year ago I called uh, EMS because I was having shortness of breath. I was, um, they came out and they mistreated me and they abused me. I wanted some oxygen. I told them I needed some oxygen. And one of the fellas told me, he asked me, he told me, are you trying to tell me my job? I said, no. I called you because I, I'm short of breath. I'd like to have some oxygen. They said and they talked to each other. And uh, they wasn't sitting, they were standing up, but they were talking to each other. I, I thought I was dying. Um, the, the fumes from the EMS truck was coming all up to my face. I already had shortness of breath. Um, they wouldn't give me any oxygen. I made sure that when I came out, I had my driver's license and my insurance card. Uh, um, they treated me just as though I didn't, I didn't even exist. When I got into the EMS truck, the fumes were all in the back of the truck. I asked for some more oxygen. The fellow just put the things up to my nose, and he closed the, closed the door. And I really felt like I didn't have any oxygen then. And there was nobody there sitting back there with me. I was so afraid I was going to die. On the way to the hospital, I asked them why they didn't have the sirens on. And the driver told me that uh, it was the time of the day that they, they, couldn't, they couldn't have them. That time of the day was in the afternoon. And, um, and so, I have, uh, since that time, I have asked for records from the city. Um, I was not provided with any records. So I want you to know that I was mistreated and abused by EMS on May 11, 2011. I have provided you with plenty of information. I have, I have uh, emailed, um, I sent the information to everyone yesterday. You can review it later if you wish. I have been frustrated in my efforts to obtain information from the city. It seems that I was not taken seriously until I asked to be placed on this meeting agenda. I would like you to look into the issues I have raised. They are clearly described in my letter on March the 2nd, 2012. Thank you. Oh, yeah. When I was, I asked them to, I didn't have to wear the neck collar.
collar, and I asked the person to go into my house and get my neck collar, and he refused to go into the house. He also tried to, uh, when I went to the emergency room, I asked him to give me my purse, and he grabbed it up in between my legs and asked me there, is that what he wanted? And they tried to paint the picture in the emergency room that I was crazy. I am not crazy. I see a psychiatrist. He hasn't diagnosed me as being crazy. I'm a veteran of the United States Navy. I worked on the psych unit. I am not crazy at all. I have been traumatized. And I just moved to the city six years ago thinking that this was a good city to come to live. But now I don't feel that way anymore. And if I get sick again, I'm afraid to call EMS. I'm afraid what they may do to me. Thank you.
phone conversation that I initiated at 2 p.m. today, which also involved participation by your husband. But this is addressed to dear Ms. Unger. The purpose of the call was to gain a general understanding of your concern regarding services you received from our fire department. Our fire department's EMS on May 11, 2011. Your husband expressed the opinion that our emergency personnel did not display the appropriate demeanor in handling the situation. He further indicated that you were both disappointed with the billing and collection problems that followed your emergency transport and hospitalization. And he asserted that the fire department would not provide a copy of their report on the May 11, 2001 incident. At 5.45 p.m. today, today would, would, uh, would be April 22nd, uh, I left a voicemail message on your phone, and the phone number is indicated, to the effect that the reports that you are seeking from the fire department are available to you, but must be provided directly to you in person in accordance with HIPAA regulations. If this presents a burden, we will deliver the reports to you at your home as a matter of courtesy. You will be contacted by the fire department in this regard before noon today. And in fact, uh, you were contacted. Most importantly, I want to assure you for your future comfort that our EMS personnel are among the best trained and equipped in the region. It has been my privilege to serve as city administrator since November of 2006. In that five and a half year period, this is the first complaint we have received regarding our EMS services. During that same period, we have received many letters of appreciation from residents, as well as commendation from emergency room physicians to the effect that our highly trained and motivated EMS personnel have saved lives and reduced human suffering. However, we strive for continuous improvement. Therefore, your input is extremely important to us. We will thoroughly review all aspects of this matter, including billing process communications. Thank you for bringing your concerns to our attention. And this was copied to the Honorable Mayor and City Council. Well, that concludes uh, my comments, Madam Chairperson.
speak up a little bit uh, on Monday nights because there are legitimate complaints, uh, legitimate concerns um, that do need to be addressed. Uh, but if somebody who uh, ran a as a candidate last year who lived in the city his whole life, um, and now I choose to live in Southfield, this is a damn good city. And our administration is doing a damn good job. And that's important because I won't really lose this bright-eyed optimism for what makes Southfield great. And I know that every person up here, we don't agree all the time on policy issues or how to handle the different things. We care about this community. We're not against the citizens. We are the citizens. And a lot of it could be a communication breakdown. But call us. Talk to us. Uh, this, I hope, is just a last-minute effort when you can't reach us. But we all are accessible at the city clerk's office. That's where our phone number is. We're all accessible uh, via email. But uh, there are 72,000 residents of this city. And I'm willing to bet that almost 72,000 people are happy to be Southfield residents. Um, and I'm one of them. So I want to make that clear. We are a good city. We are a well-run city. I'm passionate about that. I've seen it uh, as a new pair of eyes uh, for these last five months. Um, and I want to make sure that the residents do know that. And then that is, is on a televised meeting. And if, if you're a president of the city getting a little frustrated by how beat up Southfield gets we we come to these council meetings. Tell us how much you love Southfield, too, uh, because it's important to hear the good things that we're doing, because we are a well-run city. We're well-run relative to the cities around us, um, and, and I'm proud to be a Southfield resident, and I just want to make sure that's clear, because it, it, it hurts to hear these stories when people complain, uh, or, or have legitimate complaints uh, against a process by which maybe we made a mistake, but we're human, too, and we're willing to correct any mistake that's made. But the city of Southfield is strong, and it's a good city over there.
sponsored by the city of Southfield, Southfield Public Schools, and Southfield Park and Garden Club. And uh, this year the projects are Stevenson School, Washerwood Park, where the Southfield High football team will be uh, putting out, leveling out a ton of dirt in low spots in the uh, park. Um, about 60 kids will be showing up at Englewood Park from Southfield Laser High School to do cleanups there. And then um, the Leonard School uh, uh, property also will have had uh, groups of people coming to do cleanup. Uh, the, this event would not be possible without our community partners. And uh, I won't mention all 30 of them, but I do want to point out some of the top of businesses that have um, stepped up. The Allen Law Group, uh, Computerized Facility Integration, uh, Guardian uh, Alarm Services, Guardian Guard Services, Home Depot of Southfield, the Huntington Bank of Southfield, Hubble, Roth, and Clark, uh, the IT Group, um, Lowe's of Southfield, Nexus Net, Orchard Hills and McClement, uh, Paul's Tree Service, Pizzapopolis, the Southfield Sun, Spirit Tech, Target Northland, Tim Hart Hortons across the street, Waste Management, and Wing Han Restaurant at uh, 10 Mile and uh, Southfield. Um, Everybody's welcome to attend. The registration is at uh, Stevenson School at 2777 Washer Road. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Madam Chair, I would like to have, uh, uh, starting with the mayor, uh, acknowledge uh, Mr. Forbes, who is a Southfield corporate uh, person who is receiving the Urban Land Institute's highest award, which is a lifetime achievement. Uh, he's been in South uh, I believe, forever. He's got his uh, recognition mercy in the developing of high-end malls. Uh, but I'd like to ask to, if the city of South to recognize him and his corporation. And I have, uh, Terry, I have the Cranes article over here. Uh, I'd also like the mayor and his council to get involved with this telegraph road. Uh, we have to meet somebody up there at this stage. So to come down here and grab hold of this situation. This is going on three years. Uh, there's no sprinkling system. Uh, the landscaping is in place. And what made me think of this uh, Again, is that we approved the landscaper tonight under the agenda. But I found out that, that they just maintain the landscaping in the grass, which is there. The state contract was to repair and make whole those the islands. <laughs> and uh, those uh, business people, they pay an assessment. Uh, for the upkeep of the island from I-696 north to the city limits. And uh, I was just appalled that uh, as the state has just ignored the city in, in dealing with this. And, and I believe that we really need a strong letter going to them, Mr. Shred, with all of us signing it, and maybe going up there and showing some of these pictures which I have and, and telling them this is the way the state has treated us. Bad enough that they put asphalt in Southfield and concrete to the north of us. Uh, but now they're not even taking care of their obligation uh, to repair the berms which they disrupted. And it's not even to uh, mention the amount of businesses that went out of business because they, they, they didn't and uh, were concerned about the business community as they their work. Uh, the other thing I just want to mention, I guess the sound that made me think of it, did we get the cable fixed it? The equipment is here, it's being installed. The chair. Okay, <laughs> into that, but I mean, the, apparently, uh, is, is the there are a few special of doing the job, or should uh, we get rid of them? And the person capable, the person apparently has a whole lot of work. So, 
We will check on that progress tomorrow. And we ought to get something else done. Uh, I understand. I mean, that's understand the frustration. It seems like this has gone out and on too long. Uh, and that is, um, that, that's it. Uh, I know there are other members of council. Of course, I disagree with uh, Jeremy Moss. I think that uh, I've been listening to a Jeremy for a long time.
read up on me. I'm an election official. I'm tougher than I look. And I really don't mind. It's ridiculous, and I'm not going to say anything about it, because I have people approach me constantly that I don't even know, telling me how much they appreciate what I do, and the tough job it is. And I'm, I'm overwhelmed when people do that. It doesn't happen every day, but it happens enough that I feel it's vindication to know that we are doing a good job here. We have a great city. And then tomorrow, uh, I, I just blown away by the elephants that she has tonight, that she really expressed how all of us feel. He's a brand new person, but he's lived here all his life. He's had a chance to see uh, everything that goes on inside and out. We have a fabulous staff in the city. Everybody who lives here needs to know how great our city staff is. That means our police, our fire, our administration, everyone, all the way down to the low, most low level person. We have dedicated staff here that work hard, sacrifice a lot, and I am just very, very proud to be connected with this, this family of employees. I, I feel like they're my family. They're, they're so good and they're so self-sacrificing and they do so much for the people. You have a great city here. You should be proud of it. And if you really are not happy, there are plenty of other places that you might find more satisfaction. I just like to say that. Next, uh, we have um, <laughs> Mayor Schwartz. And we have the expense report from the mayor. Uh, I'd like to let you have some time to see you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll move the expense report from the mayor, the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Can you hear me, Councilman? Do you hear me?
that there was an outcry to have a reference manual that new residents can have. And we, we have the model for that, and we just need to invest in updating that. So when a new resident comes through our neighborhood association and our new, I'm sorry, our block, pres block club presidents and neighborhood association presidents can actually knock on the door of a new resident and say, welcome, and these are the codes and, and, and standards of the city of Southfield. We have so many things that we have to introduce them to, including our website, how, what information they can get on there, and our park and rec, and all those different things, and phone numbers. So I, I really, and I will be following up on this to ensure that we are in compliance with, with giving this, because it was refreshing to hear from our residents how much they want that. I also want to say the next Mayor's Roundtable will be on May 8th, and it will be on the public works, the streets, the snow plowing, the cutting of trees. And one of the things I do at the Mayor's Roundtable is that if you have a complaint, you have to give a council grant as well. So therefore, if, if there's something, if we don't, if we don't pick your garbage up the way you like, or we do a darn good job of, of sweeping the streets for you, then you tell us that. So we want to know what we're doing right, and we also need to know what the challenges are. So I, I invite people who want to attend the meeting at the table, um, please call 248-796-5100, and we, we will have the uh, appropriate people from the to give you an update on what roads are being fixed, uh, what's the status of your roads, and things like that, so that we can continue to have open dialogue in our city. I was so proud on uh, Tuesday, April 17th, the city of Southfield. We're such a leader in this in this region where we open our doors and allow the Veterans Administration to host a veterans job fair. Many of you know that we have so many veterans that are coming home now based on the fact that we have uh, seen our wars, uh, foreign wars in some countries, but we're bringing so many uh, veterans home. And then when I talk to veterans, and what do they need? And they always said we need a job. And so it was it was over 30 uh, vendors there to offer jobs to our veterans. And it was such a um, welcoming event. And the veterans were so really uh, welcome home with this open just on veterans. And so the city of Southfield hosted. And um, that's the leadership that we have in Southfield, understanding the need and opening our doors to host this. Also, uh, something is very exciting. Thursday, April 19th, um, myself and uh, Nancy Banks, our clerk, attended the Habitat for Humanity kickoff event. Now, what's so exciting about this is that the Habitat for Humanity, their model has been that they will build homes, get volunteers to build homes in cities for low-income uh, people to have the American dream of home ownership. But based on our our economy and based on the challenges that are in existing homes, we have so many foreclosed homes. They are coming to the city of Southfield. They have identified six to ten homes that they're not going to have to build from the ground up. But they can go in and rehab and put families in those homes. It was two of the new homeowners that will get these rehab homes in Southfield. That was just it's sad. And I found out that one of the new homeowners that attended the Mayor Brown thing was actually one of the new habitat. And she said she was going on the door, knocking on doors, introducing herself to her neighbors. She was so excited to be in Southfield. And Habitat for Humanity said the list is so long with so many people wanting to live in Southfield and get one of these rehab homes. And Mercedes Ben is a major sponsor. And they were telling me that they had built a home in Pontiac and they had spent thirty thousand dollars. And it was just a regular home. But they said they are taking some amazing homes in Southfield and rehabbing them. And, and, and these families are going to get some tremendous, tremendous property. The good thing about it, when they go in these homes and rehab, they, they have to go through education training. They have to go through financial training. They are really coached and monitored and encouraged to become part of the community. And then what, what I've seen from that first family owner, um, she was just phenomenal. She was knocking on doors and introducing herself. And she's holding a, a block club meeting in her house to welcome everybody to her new home. So she's, she's doing everything that we should be doing. She's amazing. 
but uh, that was very exciting. Uh, lastly, um, I just wanted to men mention that um, as spring is coming, and we have a lot of talk about upkeep of our yard, this is the time of the year that we really see curb appeal and the investment that we put into our community. Nothing speaks louder than anyone, whether you live in the city or not, to drive down the community of the street and see lawn manicured, homes painted, and trash not on the street. So I'm encouraging everyone, put your love that you have for this city to work on your piece of the property. Call us because I, I called too about a property that we own is not acceptable for these homes that we own to not meet our standards. That's totally unacceptable. And we're going to be on our job sweeping the streets, taking up the garbage, and on those public right of ways, public works will be doing their part. But we, we can do <laughs> that in the city. But curb appeal, the definition of curb appeal is when you drive through any community, the snapshots you get speak volumes on what type of city it is, because if it's dirty, if people don't cut their lines, if there's garbage cans out when there's no garbage to pick up, this is a city where people do not care about their city or their property, and that is not the South Coast thing. So I'm encouraging everyone, we'll be having Flower Day again, and that's where we'll bring everybody out and encourage you to plant flowers and to beautify your um, community. I think Councilman Steiner, that was an excellent example. What flowers do you plant? Do you plant what in the sun and what in the, in the shade? And, and how do you feed and, and uh, nurture your uh, plants? So uh, I think we should do that on table 15 and, and hope some events here in the city because we have some of When you go to the uh, Bird Center, it is just phenomenal. The front yard of our city hall oh, is just the most beautiful landscape that you can see. So I've been long winded, but um, we haven't had a meeting in a long time, so that's what happened. So, thank you, everyone. Mr. Administrator, do you have anything? No, nothing. I've heard that. Thank you.
damage to basically the Wilson Wyatt building, I think. Lots of Wyatt. Lots of The Heinz people own that. This is across, I, I think it's Bird Road or, or Beck. Is that on the no, uh, it, it's across from where the uh, Sunshine Sunrise Cafe was, uh, and the, there's something else there now. It's all on the Heinz property, uh, and they wanted to develop a uh, combination uh, retail and drive-through uh, facility. They they've had a difficult time finding anyone for that, but uh, it, it, I don't know what else to tell you, except that. What is the proposed drive through restaurant? Yes. That's what I'm asking. What is the proposed drive through restaurant? Uh, it is uh, something like a drive through Starbucks or a coffee shop. It's not a McDonald's, if that's what you mean. No, not well, not necessarily, but it would be, uh, you know, a small facility because that's about. Uh, I don't recall we did it quite a while ago. It's about six or seven thousand square feet. It's a pretty good size uh, building, and it's too big for one uh, tenant. It's a combination uh, drive-through, like a coffee shop. Um, I can't can't think of a particular coffee shop and possibility of a uh, an upscale restaurant also, which is really what we had, uh, what they had in mind for it at the beginning. A, um, because it's on the uh, downtown route for cars on Northwestern Highway, uh, it's ideal for a, um, a drive-through coffee facility and uh, the rest of it would be for uh, if you recall when oh you were you weren't here but when we were doing the Golden Corral uh, Mr. Fracassi was hoping for an upscale restaurant and that's what we were hoping for for this particular site uh, they just haven't found one and uh, but they are very interested in developing it still.
terrific meeting. I'm glad I didn't miss them. Huh. So yeah, Councilman Moss, kudos to your accolades about this city. That's exactly why you invested in this city long before you were born, or oh, 30 something years ago. Okay. okay. <laughs> but I've been, <laughs> I've been suffering lately with the city of Southfield. I have a great building on Southfield Road between nine miles and ten miles. It's impeccably kept. It looks like a picture out of, uh, out of uh, Rockwell painted. And it's been vacant over five years. Cost me a lot of money. And just recently, yesterday, a woman wanted to lease the building. And I told her she didn't have it for her business because it was only residential. She didn't, I don't think she believed me. I, I get about 10 to 15 calls a week to this building. And when I tell them they can't lease it because it's on residential and it's on Southfield Road, they don't believe me. I have really instructed them to call the city of Southfield to see why I can't lease it. Because they, if they want to lease it for an office and it's, an, and it's an impeccable condition, I don't know why they can't lease it. I'm as puzzled, I'm as, puzzled as they are. That you would want a building. So a man told me yesterday, a realtor, he said, I can't believe the city of Southfield will let this building sit here vacant and not want a small business to locate here. So I can't either. Small businesses are the backbone of our country. I can't believe it either. And I've had to pay taxes for over five years. I've had to, I've spent over $30,000 to make it look good and make it appealing. But I can't lease it. So I'm asking the council. I'm not here, I'm not here to fight with you like everybody else. I'm going to ask for your help. Would you please give me a provision to let me lease this building as office space while, with, with the one year extension, while I work on this to increase the size according to the site plan, planner, the city plan. I don't know why I have to increase the size, but I have to adhere to your code and ordinances or whatever they happen to be because I've had. At least 100 people want to add this. So I'm asking you to please let me lease this building to generate some revenue to help me meet your specifications. I have a picture of it with me if you'd like to see it. Yeah, I'd be happy to show you. Yep. 
My husband was probably here at that time. But it was occupied as a home. And uh, ever since that, those people moved, no, no one else wants to live on the top of the road. That's all I Yeah.
There was an amended agenda that was given to council this evening. I'm sorry, it should be up there. Um, I apologize if everyone didn't get a copy, but the correct coordinates number 